All right, guys, so in this example here, we have a car and there's two ropes attached to a link that are is in the center of that car. And we have two ropes pulling on that link, one force being FA and one force being FB. We're told that these two forces combine to make a resultant force that's going to be horizontal along the x-axis and it's going to have a magnitude of 1250 newtons. So a force like this and it'll have a magnitude of 1250 newtons. We're told or tasked to find what this force FA should be in this angle theta should be such that this case of a horizontal force of 1250 newtons is, is indeed the resultant force. So let's begin by drawing a parallelogram that's going to be our schematic. And I, I'm alluding to that because whenever we have a force such as FA, FB, and a resultant force, and we're looking for one of the three forces in maybe an angle, it's typically the way we're going to go. So we have 1250 newtons horizontally, and then we have force FA, and that'll be as such and force FB will be as such. And now we just close it up. So just repeat force FB just from so your position and then force FA as well. And there's our parallelogram. Now we just mark it up. So our resultant force we're told should be 1250 newtons. Our force FA is the unknown here. So we'll mark FA and force FA. Force FB is given as 800 newtons, 800 newtons, and then the x-axis and rope B make an angle of 30 degrees, and the resultant force being assumed to be along the x-axis, um, or horizontal makes it the x-axis, um, so we can treat this as 30 degrees, and then from geometry, alternate angles, so this triangle here should have 30 degrees. Now we're not done yet, so I'm going to go ahead and draw the y axis. So something like that. And we're told that this angle here is going to be theta, and that is what we're looking for. So if we look carefully at our schematic here, we have a parallelogram, but when we divide it with that resultant force, what we really have is a set of two triangles. So let's transpose this top triangle here. So we'll do that right underneath. So we have our resultant force, and then we have our force FA, and then our force FB. And I will mark it up once again. So we'll have 800 newtons for FB, unknown FA, and then 1250 newtons for the resultant. And I almost forgot you do have your 30 degree angle here. And now, it looks like we have a side-side angle triangle, right? But luckily, for the side that we're missing, we have an angle that's opposite of it. So we have F force FA, which we want, and we have the opposing angle. So it sounds like we could just use the law of cosines, and that just simply states that side C, which is just any given side or any desired side, is equal to side A squared plus side B squared minus 2 times the product of side A and side B times cosine of the angle opposing side C. So in the case of this triangle here, we have side FA we're looking for, which we're treating as side C, and the opposing angle is the 30 degrees. So let's make some substitutions here. So we'll have that for, uh, force FA equals... And then side A, we'll just say is 800 squared plus B is 1250 squared minus 2 times 800 times 1250 times the cosine of 30 degrees. And take the square root of that. And if you plug this in your calculator, you'll find that force FA equals 685.89 newtons. So now let's go ahead and add that bit of information to our triangle here. So we'll replace force FA with 685.89 newtons. And now you can see we have a side, side, side triangle being 685.89, 800, and 1250. So we can still apply the law of cosines, and then we can just use the law of cosines to find this missing 
angle, and that's going to be, let's call it alpha. Call this alpha. And alpha is just going to be the angle between force FA and the resultant force. So it would be right over here. Right over here would be your force or your angle alpha. And uh, the reason why we're going to calculate alpha is because we know that there's a 90 degree angle between the y and x axis. So if you remove alpha out of that 90 minus alpha, we should be able to find theta. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. So we'll find the that angle with using the law of cosines. So again, to find a missing angle, you would need to, use, to set C equal to the opposite side. So the opposite side in this case is 800. So we'll have that 800 equals the square root of A, which we'll say is 685.89 squared plus B squared, which would be 1250 squared minus 2 times 685.89 times 1250 times cosine of alpha. And I just close that square root on all of that. Now to just solve for alpha, what we'll do is we'll square everything. So we'll have 800 squared and that removes the square root. And then we'll subtract 685.89 squared. And then we'll subtract 1250 squared. And now we just divide everything by negative 2 times 685.89 times 1250. And this is going to leave you with cosine alpha. So to undo that cosine, what we could do is cosine minus 1 inverse of this expression here. And when you do, you'll be left with alpha. And now we just plug this into our calculator. When you do, you'll have that alpha equals 35.67 degrees. So right over here, we have our alpha being equal to 35.67 degrees. So now if we just subtract 90 minus alpha equals theta, we'll have that 90 minus 35.67 degrees equals theta, and theta is equal to 54.33 degrees.